I'm a financial advisor, so you can imagine every time I'm at a barbecue or a cocktail party or just hanging out with people, questions come up about stocks and bonds. Uh, it's a normal thing, that's fine. I don't mind talking about it. Heck, I come on YouTube to talk about it, so it's fine. But what I wanted to do was record a video kind of explaining the differences between stocks and bonds because they're completely different things. It's like comparing apples and oranges or night and day or comparing the New York Yankees to like a little league team. They're both playing baseball, but it's very different. Uh, and so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about the difference between stocks and bonds. So we'll tell a story. Let's tell a story about Cousin Eddie of Cousin Eddie's Landscaping Emporium. I hope there's not actually a company out there called that. I didn't Google it in advance. There probably isn't. Uh, if there is, this is not about some specific company. This is about our made up Cousin Eddie uh, of Cousin Eddie's Landscaping Emporium. So let's pretend that you're at a uh, barbecue uh, and all the family's there and you see Cousin Eddie across the yard in the back and boy, he's looking good. He's like smiling a little bit brighter. Uh, he's got some nice clothes on today. You noticed that they pulled up in a brand new Escalade and you think, boy, I guess the landscaping business is doing pretty good and so then later you're chit-chatting with eddie and you say hey cousin eddie how you been what's going on and he says oh let me tell you uh business is booming it is fantastic uh really the problem is i don't have enough equipment i don't have enough workers i've got more customers and more contracts than i can handle i'm actually looking for some investors what do you think about coming in with me what do you think about investing in the landscaping emporium and he says uh how about this? You lend me $100,000, you can own 25% of the company. I'm going to use that money. I'm going to buy more trucks. I'm going to buy more equipment. Uh, and here's what we'll do. We'll pay all of the bills from the business. We'll pay the employees and everything that flows down to the bottom line in exchange for your $100,000. You're going to get one-fourth of the profits because you're now going to be a one-fourth owner. You're going to own 25% of the landscaping emporium. What have you done there? You've essentially bought stock. You're now an owner in the business. It works the same way when you buy stock in a company. Uh, if you buy stock in Coca-Cola, technically you're an owner of Coca-Cola. Now, you can't make any decisions with your one share of Coca-Cola. You own like a fractional tiny little bit, but technically you're an owner of Coca-Cola. And so you look at that in the same way as if you owned a piece of Cousin Eddie's business. What do you care about? You care about profits profits from the company. You don't want them to just stay in business. You want them to make money and you want the amount of money that they're making to grow because as an owner of a business, one, those profits are what determine the value of your investment. And two, if those profits are growing, the value of your investment is also growing. That's what stock is. Buying stock, whether it's one share in a company or 25% of the landscaping emporium, buying stock in a company is ownership and what matters are profits. Now let's rewind our story. Let's back it up. Uh, there's Cousin Eddie. He's looking good. Clothes are good. Same Escalade. And you start to chat with him again. And you say, hey, Cousin Eddie, what's new? What's going on? And he says, oh, things are good. Business is booming. Uh, what I don't have is enough equipment and employees. I really need to raise some capital. How about this? I know. Why don't you invest with me? And he says, how about you lend me $100,000? And you lend me $100,000, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna go buy another truck, I'm gonna go buy some equipment, I'm gonna hire some more employees. I'll borrow the money from you for five years. I'll pay you 5% per year. So I'll pay you 5% interest. At the end of the five years, I'll give you your $100,000 back. How's that sound? Sound like a good investment to you? What's he done there? Well, you're not an owner in the company, you've lent him money. You've essentially acted as a bank. You've lent money to Cousin Eddie. That's the same as buying a bond. Buying a bond, you're not an owner of a company, you're a creditor. You've lent money to the company, or could be a municipality or government. There's all different types of bonds, but ultimately when you invest in a bond, what you're doing is lending money. Now, do you care that his profits go up? Not really. I mean, it, it doesn't help you if his profits go up. Maybe you want him to because he's your cousin and you hope that he does well. But at the end of the day, your investment return is going to be the interest that he agreed to pay you, the 5% per year. And then at the end of the five years, you want him to be able to pay you back. So what matters to you is that he stays in business. He remains a functioning enterprise. If he gets more profitable, if he gets more customers and more business from that, you don't get any extra money. You get the interest that you earned and there's less risk to you that he won't be able to repay. Same thing if you bought a Coca-Cola bond, not the stock, you don't own any of the company. You bought a bond, you lent money to them that they used to do whatever it is that they chose to do with the money. 
All you care about is that they stay in business and they have the ability to pay their bills, one of which is your bond. And then at the end of the term, they've got the ability to repay you and you get your money back. And so if we take a step back and we think about those two things, stocks, being an owner in a company, bonds, lending money to a company or the government or whoever else it may be, you're looking for two different things from that investment. And as a result, stocks tend to be far more volatile because lots of things can impact the profits of a company, uh, but they also tend to provide more growth. Over the long run, they've out-earned bonds because being an owner and taking the risk that comes along with it has a greater payoff because your return depending upon the profits of the company is, is theoretically unlimited, right? If you invest in the next big thing and their profits grow incredibly, you receive the benefit from that because the value of your stock goes up along with it. If you lent money to that company, well, you get your money back and you get the interest that you earn, but there's far less upside in bonds. So as a result, Bonds tend to fluctuate a lot less. They tend to be more conservative investments than stocks. Now, there's now, as you can imagine, there's a place for both in the portfolio. There's a place for stocks that provide growth and, and much higher long-term potential returns. And then there's a place for bonds that can provide steady income or a diversifying asset class. In That's the explanation today. Uh, I wonder if you'd be more uh, pro I'll lend to Cousin Eddie or pro I'll invest with Cousin Eddie and take an ownership piece of the business. Some of that might speak to your own personal risk tolerance. Either way, I hope I brought to light today the differences between the two in a way that you can understand. And you think about that and the next time you're looking at your investment portfolio or thinking about making an investment. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Come on back, uh, visit us another time. I thank you for being here. I hope you learned something and I'll see you soon.